what happens when hedge funds plan to sell stock options at $2 each, but then a massive army of continually growing internet morons band together and drive the price up to $483? Well, the answer is quite obvious. Illegal market manipulation on a scale never seen before. Get yourself strapped in, we're going to the moon. My name is John Ross with Finance on a Budget. When hedge funds stand to lose billions overnight, there is no end to the number of underhanded tricks they will pull to dig themselves out of the mess that they've created for themselves. With the spotlight being on GameStop and AMC stocks, a new type of stock investor has emerged, the retards, as they call themselves. Everyone has heard something about this on the news. But what you may not understand is how these and other stocks have been manipulated to the nth degree. In this video, I will be explaining what companies like Melvin Capital and Citadel were doing to make money, how Keith Gill and Wall Street Bets managed to bankrupt Melvin Capital only to later be bailed out by Citadel and Point72 at a tune of $2.75 billion. Yeah, that's with a B. We even know that the short squeeze hasn't happened yet because every single day they are making the most desperate moves, continually forcing the prices lower even as I write this. By driving the stock prices up and down, they are desperately trying to make enough money to cover the bloodbath that is coming. Eventually, they will need to buy these stocks back and they are trying desperately not to go out of business in the process. The Hedge Funds Melvin Capital is at the center of this trading frenzy. They are now defendants in at least nine lawsuits by retail investors alleging a conspiracy to limit trading that caused them to lose money. Citadel is another hedge fund that is also front and center with 11 class action lawsuits against them for the exact same reason. These hedge funds are companies that use money from high net worth investors, corporations, foundations, and pension funds. They apply this borrowed money to various strategies to generate more money. In this very specific situation, they are dealing with puts or betting against the company's stock prices and hoping that they're going to fall. This type of strategy has always confused me because I could immediately see that they could lose everything if the stock prices continued to rise. The risk of losing massive amounts of money made no sense to me at all. Apparently, that's the reason why these companies are standing to lose everything because of their greed. The biggest issue for the way that they have been trading is they have over leveraged themselves by more than 100%. The numbers have become very sketchy because they lie all the time and no one can trust them. So we don't know how much over 100% they need to buy back, but it's significant. What did Wall Street Bets do? Wall Street Bets are a group of internet investors, apes, who are buying up GameStop and AMC stock as much as they can get their hands on. By buying and owning as much as they can, at some point the hedge funds are going to have to buy it back from them. This is where the madness starts to kick in. By themselves, they started with like 3 million readers in a subreddit forum all looking to cash in. Once the news of what was happening became national attention, the numbers rose to 10 million and beyond. Now this idea really had legs, and the motto for months had been Ape Strong, Hodel the Line, and Diamond Hands. Not to omit my own personal favorite, Rocket Ships, Pew Pew Pew! Okay, fine, they don't actually say that, but I say that all the time. What did Keith Gill do? Keith Gill is being hailed as a hero. He is a financial analyst who felt that GameStop stock was horribly undervalued at $2 to $3 a share. So he started buying it, a lot of it. Keith and the Wall Street Bet guys realized everything I just said, so everyone started jumping on the bandwagon. After slowly investing for years, at one point being down over $40,000, he became an overnight millionaire when he started selling off some of his stock on its way up to $483. What happened on January 28th? This was the day that the stocks rose to crazy numbers. As it went higher, the back end of the market went crazy with Robinhood halting trades and investors not being able to buy shares, instead only sell them. This is why Robinhood now has a whopping 90 lawsuits against them. Investors across the board were furious, but Robinhood took the cake. But in general, trades across the systems are being suspended, everything tripped and stumbled over itself until the market was shut down for the night. Soon after, the hedge funds did ladder attacks to bring the price back down, ultimately to around $50 to $60 each. The basic idea behind a ladder attack is they flood the market with stocks based on consistently lower price points, usually by a penny. They use a secondary account to buy the shares right back, now at the lower rate of one penny less. This generally happens so fast, it's over within minutes. It could also be dragged down for over an hour. This means they could easily drop a price by $20 within 10 minutes. But this isn't the only strategy. 
Competing hedge funds can also drive the price up in a similar attack, allowing them to cash in on option calls, which means that they're betting on the price going up in value. But if it goes up or down by too much, too fast, the stock trading becomes suspended. It's only supposed to be for like five minutes, but one afternoon it was suspended for like 20 minutes until the market closed. This is no longer about the small investor against the big hedge funds, but rather hedge fund against hedge fund. If they can bankrupt the competition and make an absolute financial killing along the way, then why not? This simply leaves us small investors to be little more than spectators while they fight it out. When the hedge funds start doing ladder attacks and they drive the price down lower and lower, if it reaches a certain point, what can happen is stop losses. A stop loss is when somebody buys a stock and then says at some point, if it drops too much, just sell it immediately. So when these ladder attacks go down a certain amount, 20 or $30, these stop losses kick in and suddenly everybody starts dumping and you lose a huge amount of money on the stock. Meanwhile, the hedge funds got exactly what they wanted. And then it takes the rest of the market a few days to actually recover. Similarly, there was also a run up on March 10th. By this point, I was somewhat financially invested in both GameStop and AMC. I am fascinated by what is unfolded, and there's still so much more to go. Why do GameStop and AMC stocks go up and down together? This is an often asked question. It's not just GameStop and AMC linked at the hip. Other similarly shorted stocks like BlackBerry, Fubo, Naked, and Sundial Growers that are all doing the exact same thing. But the question is often, why? The reason is that these stocks are placed into ETF stocks. Unlike regular stocks, ETF stocks buy other stocks as part of a portfolio. So if a hedge fund manipulates the ETF, all the stocks inside of it tend to follow the same trends. This used to be beat for beat, but since it all started, things have changed a bit. These days, while AMC largely follows GameStop, it's not all the time. What did Congress do? Congress stepped in and had a hearing, multiple ones actually. Even our hero Keith Gill, also known as Roaring Kitty, was invited to join in, and he absolutely crushed it. So you recommended uh, GameStop uh, before. Would you buy their stock now at roughly 45? You were talking about buying it and being happy uh, when it hit cross 20. So are you buying that stock today? Well, let me just say that investing can be risky, and my particular approach to investing is rather aggressive and may not be suitable for anyone else. But for me personally, yes. So yes or no, are you buying the stock? And for me personally, yes, I do find it's an attractive investment at this price point. He then went home, and you guessed it, he bought more stock. Meanwhile, Robin Hood thanked every one of the congressmen for their questions, then proceeded to avoid answering any of them. Of course, he wasn't the only one. Is any of this even legal? The manipulation of the market is definitely a no, not legal. However, proving the manipulations could be hard, even though obvious. This is the reason for using ETFs as a pass-through entity. So no, it's not legal, but doubtful anything will come of it. Same with the lawsuits. Everyone will blame everybody else. It's a mess. Can any of this crazy profit really happen, or is it all just a dream? As strange as it sounds, I feel like we've drifted off into a parallel universe anyway. Since November, Biden won the presidency, two Democratic Georgian senators were elected. Ultimately, this meant that we received the promised large stimulus package. I actually managed to get approved for a very generous paycheck protection payment, and I even watched Zack Snyder's Justice League. That was awesome, by the way. So yeah, in this universe spinoff, I kind of believe that there is something here that will pay out generously. I'm a realist, though. Since we've already hit 483 once and 348 as well, then 500 is quite possible. We know something is up as these hedge funds continually beat down on these stocks like there is no tomorrow. And you know what? For them, there may not be a tomorrow. I mean, what happens when the DDTC gets involved? A new provision to force hedge funds to stop lying. And these stocks need to be covered. The DDTC will have full congressional support to sell off any of the other possessions that they hold to cover their bets. Any price will be paid, in theory, to make the debt whole again. So in a perfect world, if no one sells until $10,000, then that's the price that must be paid. While we have seen prices like this listed in our order book, it has to get past everyone who will be happily selling at $500, $800, or $1,000. Personally, if I were to sell GameStop at $500, I would be making some serious bank. Can AMC do what GameStop can do? Absolutely. Think of it this way. If GameStop actually reaches $800 you should know full well that all of these Wall Street bettors are going to double down on AMC next. 
while there are other stocks that also qualify, AMC is going to be the next big bet. I already own hundreds of AMC stock because it was so cheap, why not? Again, it's also worth more than it's currently priced at. If this stock goes next, I will make a fortune. If it doesn't, the company is still poised to make big moves in the next two years, gaining back its true value in the market.